So there's a lot of value in even doing low reps, but thinking like a bodybuilder. Sometimes. You're right. That just takes so much more skill. And and yes. discipline to yes. lower their weight. Yes. Because a guy like you knows he can get onto the bar right now and squat 450 and you want to move and you're like, today's a heavy day. I'm moving right. triples. Or I could do two really controlled yeah, slow reps. 225 or 275. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't want to do that because right. it, it gets it, your ego messes with you a little bit. But yet there's a ton of value and you actually, yes. and by the way, because- the, the 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 muscle doesn't recognize it's 275 or 4050 it, it recognizes the intensity that right. you're taking towards it right. you can bring that same 450 pound intensity with 275 so that is in in a, in a sense i think still valuable to train that way sometimes i think the biggest key takeaway for most of the listeners is understanding that whether you believe it or not you probably identify with one group more yes. than the other and learning to move into the other mindset and, and learn how to do that, train that way, I think will provide you tremendous yeah. value. Here's, here's a muscle building tip. Uh, don't try to move the weights. Rather, focus on challenging the muscle. This was actually uh, told to us by a good friend, uh, Ben Pakulski. Very smart guy. Mm. Bodybuilder knows what he's talking about. And uh, I, I agree. I agree. I think that's a very good uh, tactic when it comes I, to- I love that piece of advice, but you have to break that down a little bit. Like, the, what does that mean and mm -hmm. why is that important for so, certain people that yeah, are what's focused? The difference? Why are but people that are focused? And this is, I think this, this tip comes from somebody who's really focused on trying to sculpt the body, build yeah. muscle. Mm -hmm. That's their Bodybuilders are experts at this, right? Now, this doesn't mean that trying to just move the weight doesn't also build muscle. It does. Getting stronger generally does help build muscle. But this is a uh, really, really muscle building focused. Bodybuilders are excellent at this where they'll take a weight and let's say it's a weight they could do 20 reps with. Um, they'll be able to get 10 reps with that weight and make it feel like that 10 reps is extremely intense. Just by focusing and concentrating on the target muscles, the squeeze and the stretch. And you can do this. And what's cool about this, especially as you become more advanced, is that it lowers the risk of resistance training, right? So rather than continuing to add weight, at some point, it's probably smarter to try to make the weight feel heavier. And your body really doesn't know the difference if you do this the right way. Well, it also makes a huge difference when you're trying to sculpt a physique and you're working on specific body parts, right? So if I if I, if I I get a client to understand that, and let's say a client comes to me and they, they really want to develop their chest. Yeah. And that's that's a that's a primary focus. And maybe they have great delts already and great arms already and it's just like that. Man, I have this lagging chest and I really want to focus on that. This is where this piece of information becomes really valuable, especially when performing a movement like a bench press, which mm -hmm. is a compound lift that you've got shoulders and triceps, you've got all these other muscles that are involved in that movement. And if for most of your life, you were just trying to get stronger and lift more weight, lift more weight, well, then your body's going to move in a, in a manner in order to just get that weight up, whether that be using momentum or you using all your other secondary muscles to help it out. And you see this sometimes. Sometimes I used to be able to see it in a, in a guy who I would see bench presses really well. And then he had these massive delts and triceps, but then he had kind of a weak looking chest. Yeah. Like that right away to me is a red flag that when that guy lifts, he's just trying to get that weight up as much as he can. And he's allowing those secondary muscles to take over a lot of the movement instead of thinking about the muscle we're trying to develop in that exercise and trying to make it challenging for the chest. And what that requires you to do many times and why it's hard for people is to lower the weight, mm -hmm. is to drop the weight down. And then make it feel heavy and target that muscle. That's right. And focus on squeezing that muscle and fatiguing that muscle during the movement versus, I know I can do another 25 pounds. Yeah, the problem right. is when you start getting up to your, closer to your max load, it's harder to stay focused on a specific muscle. Instead, the body just wants to get the weight up. And so I love that piece of totally. advice. Totally. I mean, yeah. if you're, let's say you're trying to build your glutes and your squat weight continues to go up, your glutes really aren't developing, but your quads continue to develop. Um, you, you don't want to keep adding weight because what you're doing is you're going to continue to use this, whatever this, this recruitment pattern is that you've developed. That's effective. It's effective at lifting heavy weight, but it's not developing the muscles that you really want. And like you said, you lower the weight, change your technique, change the feel, focus on what the glutes do during the squat. The, well, the glutes are hip extension. What does that feel like? How can I squeeze the glutes? How can I make this more of a glute exercise? And that often means you have to go lighter. Usually, I'd say 99% yeah. of the time, it means you go lighter, but then make the weight feel heavier. And bodybuilders are so good at this. They're so good. When you watch a really good bodybuilder train, that's what they're doing. And oftentimes, people look at bodybuilders, really experienced ones, and they go, you know, that guy's 260 pounds and he's benching like 200 pounds. Like, how's that? 
Does that make sense? He must be really weak. Well, no, he's just really good at making 200 pounds. He's real like good at that mind-muscle connection. Totally. Yeah, like the, the whole time under tension is a completely different mindset. And it's something that's – it's cool that we have the ability to um, completely shift the variable and make something more challenging by just, you know, like focusing more exclusively on which muscles can I feel firing off more and yeah. how can I really, you know, uh, get get even like more hyper-focused in that direction versus just moving weight and trying to get through the exercise. Mm -hmm. Can I really grind my way through this and, and intensify it uh, further and it's it's a cool thing that we have the ability to do that in contrast to just you know really just focusing on getting through the movement now in a perfect world to the point sal you were also making is you have the ability to do both yes yep. right so in a perfect yes. world now what ends up happening for most people is you you tend to be one or the other and i'll use i'm going to use justin and i as an example because i think in, in our 20s when we were lifting together uh, oh, yeah. were, were perfect we're examples of, of being the polar opposite here. Mm -hmm. I was the bodybuilder guy who was moving the lighter weight, really, really good at, at the mind muscle. Justin was incredibly good at organizing his entire body to move more weight. So he was much stronger than I was on things like the bench press. But the way we moved the weight is was so different. Mm -hmm. And what you tend to do is, and, or what a lot of clients do, is, especially this is even experienced lifters that have been lifting for five, six, ten years, is they stick to a way of lifting always. If you identified more as the bodybuilder guy, like me, you always kind of yeah. lifted that way. And I never lifted like a strong man. I never tried to do a squat or a bench press and just move as much weight. I always moved it like a bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. And someone like Justin would probably admit that for most of his career, he just tried to move it like an athlete. Yep. Just move as much weight as possible. Never really moved it like a bodybuilder. But there's tremendous value in making that crossover and learning how to do both and then actually integrating that into your programming on depending on well, what you do. What doing. I noticed with that was just how to make those micro adjustments because I was more connected to, uh, you know, muscles that were involved in the lift where, you know, if there's any kind of a shift, any lateral shift, any kind of twisting, whatever I could correct and like actually like get connected to the, to the muscles that will help stabilize and, and, and make my lift more effective and efficient in that vertical line. So, you know, at least from a technical perspective, like being able to have access uh, in control of your muscles more, like I feel like that really helped enhance. Oh that. yeah, the value. Uh, there's value in each, right? The value in learning how to move more weight is you, you become very efficient with your movement. You can transfer your strength in a real way. You've got really good functional carryover to the real world because when you're lifting a couch, moving something, you're you know wrestling with your kids or whatever. You're not thinking biceps, triceps, shoulders. That you know, you're just moving, right? So there's lots of carryover, right? Now, what's the value in, in, in connecting the muscles? Well, you can develop target muscles. You can avoid imbalances. The risk factor for injury is real low. Like, here's one thing that I'll say all day long. Uh, and, you know, we people can try arguing this, but it's totally true. Forget all everything else I just said. The person who trains to feel muscles, they've got incredible longevity with their training. Yeah. You see guys like this train 70s, 80s, 90s, never really hurt themselves, always develop a nice looking physique. And don't really, they have a low risk of injury because they're really focused on feeling the muscle. Whereas it's the person less that's crazy damaging on the joints. Yes. The person trying to move as much weight as possible, it's a higher risk, right? So there's that, right? But then there's that, the carryover of the functionality. But it is funny when I would train a athlete in the gym versus when I would train somebody who's always done bodybuilding. Like you ever try to get a bodybuilder style of, you know, person or whatever, you ever get them to try and do like a kettlebell swing? Or yeah, yeah. or a clean with like a barbell, a, like a squat shoulder squat, raise. It's so raise, it's yeah. so weird, right? Mm -hmm. It's like you could tell that their muscles are working like one after another after another. It's all right? segmented, yeah. Yeah, or you try to get like an athlete to row in a way to where we're going to get the rhomboids, or let's get the lats really involved, or yeah. slow down your pull up or your curls. Let's really focus on this, you know, this squeeze. Just, here. Rah, rah. Yes, yeah. right. So it's it is really. Like, remember when we all worked out with Ben Pikulski? He's yeah. obviously this guy's like. <laughs> yeah. He's bodybuilder extraordinaire. Yeah. He's an expert on on mind muscle connection. Okay, and it was funny because we all worked out with him, and it was so it was the three of us. And Ben's kind of taking us through a workout. It was really fun, yeah. but he kept going back to Justin to changing yeah. his form. He's just, he's just like, oh, just irritated him. You know, like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry, Ben. You know, I'm yeah. just not like you guys. Yeah. yeah, but it was yeah, it was difficult for me uh, to to get in that mindset because it's just again, that's a totally different skill that obviously he's mastered at the highest level. Yeah, but what I appreciate about you. 
admitting that and talking about that is look how advanced of a lifter you are and experience and you have the knowledge to understand the value both but then also that just highlights how much we all tend to gravitate totally. towards a way of training totally. and there's so much value yeah. in learning to be both of these guys learning how to switch that mindset mm -hmm. over i'm going to train a while like a bodybuilder i'm going to move the weight where i'm not thinking about moving the weight i'm thinking about challenging the muscle and that's how i'm going to train and that you know so for the listeners that own uh, several of our programs and stuff, this is really the difference of how you lift when you're following MAPS power lift versus how you lift when you're following MAPS aesthetic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you are following MAPS power lift, your mind shifts over into being like someone who's trying to move as much weight. It's not chest day on that's MAPS right, power lift. That's right. It's bench press Exactly. Day. And that's what you want to be thinking like. When you're working in our MAPS aesthetic or our MAPS split program, which is more bodybuilder focused, you're trying to challenge the muscle. And so when you choose your weights, for those programs, you should have that thought process in mind when you're going. Totally. Through it. For me, it's when I do the uh, the low rep sets. So like fewer exercises, higher sets, uh, and lower reps. In other words, instead of doing like three exercises, four shoulders, um, and my rep range being ten to fifteen, I'm doing like one. So it's all overhead press, and I'm doing like sets of two reps or three reps. When I'm doing the low reps like that, I am not focusing on feeling the shoulders. It's all about moving the weight. It's all about maximizing movement efficiency. When I go into 10, 12, 15, especially 15 plus reps, it's not about movement efficiency for me at least. That's when I'm really trying to focus and squeeze the muscle. Now, I in the past would tend to move towards more movement than muscle because I, I, I'm i I'm almost in the middle with, with what I appreciate, but I'm probably, I lean more towards strength. I think I enjoy that a little more. As I've gotten older though, I've appreciated more of feeling the muscle. Why? It's lower risk. Yeah. It just is. Like I'm 43 now. I've been working out for a long time. You know, consistently pulling and pushing super heavy weight all the time. I start to feel it. In well, my and because of that feel. advice, I'm going to challenge what you just said because um, I do agree. Though I think what you just said is very good general advice for somebody when you're moving in the lower rep range. Yeah. Like that's I, general good advice. But that being said, to the point you just made right now, as you get older, you start to realize like, man, just moving, just trying to move heavy weight sometimes. Yep. Boy, that's when my joint. So there's a lot of value in even doing low reps, but thinking like a bodybuilder. Sometimes. You're right. That just takes so much more skill and and yes. discipline to yes. lower their weight. Yes. Because a guy like you knows he can get onto the bar right now and squat 450 and you want to move and you're like, today's a heavy day. I'm moving right. triples. Or I could do two really controlled yeah. slow reps. 225 or 275. Yeah. Two, yeah. two, yeah. And you don't want to do that because right. it, it gets, it, your ego messes with you a little bit, but yet there's a ton of value and you actually, yes. and by the way, because the, the 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 muscle doesn't recognize it's 275 or 4050 it, it recognizes the intensity that right. you're taking towards it right you can bring that same 450 pound intensity with 275 so that is in in a, in a sense i think still valuable to train that way sometimes i think the biggest key takeaway for most of the listeners is understanding that whether you believe it or not you probably identify with one group more yes. than the other and learning to move into the other mindset and, and learn how to do that, train that way, I think will provide you tremendous yeah. value. Here's a, here's a little trainer trick that I used to do all the time or trainer hack. If I got a client and, and their goal was change the way I look, that was the main goal, change my, my aesthetics, my composition. And I looked at their old workouts, I'd just do the opposite. So, and mm -hmm. this usually looked like for female clients, focusing on just moving the weight because they usually didn't do it that way. And it would blow their minds on how much their bodies change. Or if they always trained that way, oh, I was an athlete. I like to do athletic type workouts. I'm like, okay, we're going to do some bodybuilding for two or three months. Mm -hmm. And it was just a trainer trick because I could show them in two or three months dramatic changes in their body. So the value is there. It, there's value in both. Um, I definitely think everybody should do both. Yo, here's the giveaway today. MAPS Split. This is a bodybuilder workout program. Here's how you can get it for free. Leave a comment or a review in the comment section in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on notifications. Do all those things. If we like your comment in that section, we'll notify you and you'll get free access to MAPS Split. Also, we got a sale going on right now. Our most popular workout bundle the RGB bundle, which is MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, MAPS Aesthetic, plus a bunch of other free stuff. That bundle is on sale, 50% off. Then we also have an individual MAPS program that's on sale, MAPS Suspension. It's a suspension trainer workout program, about three months long. That's also 50% off. So if you're interested, go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code JULY50 for that discount.
All right, here comes the show. Well, speaking of uh, dramatic changes and uh, things that I've seen, and, and to all these points that we're bringing up, like this is what I've been really trying to incorporate in programming and, and this whole entire process since January with you know these these high school kids. And um, I was just looking around uh, the other day, and so we we shifted from that whole five by five to doing isometrics to doing more hypertrophy focus as of late with supersets, and now we're back into you know, like sets of three. Um, and, and the kids are really responding right now to this heavyweight training and lifting. And uh, I was talking to a few of the coaches and and they were looking around. And they're like, do you see, do you see Malcolm? Do you see Artem? Do you see like some of these kids are looking beefy. And, and I was asking them like since January, I was asking like two of the kids, I'm like, how much weight have you gained? And, and, there's been at least seven or eight kids now that have gained if, like 15 to, to even 30 pounds. What? Holy cow. Yeah. Since January? Since January. Bro, that's so rad. Which oh I was my like, God. I don't know. I was tripping out on that when I was done because it was like, you know how it is when you're just in it and you're just trying to stress the form of and the, the, you know, and like stay ahead of everything and make sure. Like I kept stressing the fact that we need to like really just focus on protein and like getting after it in terms of like feeding your body because I've been putting all this demand on it and, you know, the rest recovery. So I've even reduced from three days a week down to two and then skills training all in between. And so it was like, I didn't know if that was a good shift transition. And um, so it was cool to see that like, you know, wow. these Bro, kids that is, are really responding. How old are these kids? Are 16, 15, 16, Yeah, because it spans because we even had since, uh, I think it was end of May, June, we had the eighth graders come down now because they're going to be freshmen. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it was like I was starting over with them and then comboing it with the guys that were like more advanced. Now, the guys that gained like 15, 20, 30 pounds, how old were they? Yeah, so these were all the the sophomore to, to seniors. Wow. So yeah, you have like anywhere from 16, like 15 to 18. Bro, okay. I, people may not realize like, that's a big deal. Like to gain 20 pounds yeah, yeah. of- This is very visible. Dude. And it's mostly lean body mass. I'm, I'm yeah, mostly. I mean, of course, like they're probably, you gain some body body fat with that. I'm not going to say it's all lean, but it's, it's at least to, to gain that kind of substantial mass where like, they, and they do have, is their strength going through the room? Their strength, their strength is a reflection of that. Oh, so it's wow. not like it's just a mass that they're just like slapping on. That's, yeah. that's wow. useless. That, and it, so there's challenges with training kids at that age, because at that age, your metabolism is so ridiculous, but also your hormones work for you. Yeah. So you got to feed the hell out of yourself. And you also have so, newbie gains. So they have like two things that are working for but them. But I mean, dude, 20 pounds dude, they're at the, muscle or mostly muscle, 30 pounds yeah. since January is insane. Yeah. I mean, they're at the peak of their, uh, you know, their testosterone. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're in that like bubble, yeah. you know, but, but to be able to maintain and get the benefit of that, dude, like, what's they have so, to eat. It, what's so cool is that you've given them these things at that age. Like I, oh, bro, God, that's, like, I mean, they're going to think they're going to, they're going to talk about it's been you. a decade spinning my wheels, at least as, as a, as a Bro, young these, kid. These lifting. kids are going to be yeah. dads one day and they're going to talk about coach Andrews. Oh yeah. I remember in high school and he'd helped us and had me eat more food and lift and I put on 20, like that's life changing shit. Are, now, are they supplementing too? Are you having them take like protein mm -hmm. powder? Creatine and, and, and protein powder. And, and really like, because some of them, I mean, they kept asking me for good source and this and that, and I've gone through you know, like kind of coaching them through that to where I even just, I went to the back and I grabbed a bunch of the Legion uh, bottles of whey protein. And I brought, I brought that to uh, a few of the players who've been just consistently getting after it. And I'm like, you know, I just want to keep like fueling this. Bro, I totally, that's how I would totally reward the guys that are like doing the, the work. The, like, yeah. So exactly. the other guys I, could see I, that. I, that's what I did. Oh yeah. In yeah. front of everybody. Smart. I'm like, he's been you know, really consistent. Bro, you know? I would have so, loved you as my coach. Yeah. He gave me a protein. Oh. Yeah, he got so excited about it too. Yeah. Cause he's like, he's like, wow, I, I can't believe how delicious this is. And it doesn't give me all the gas and yeah. all that. And I'm like, that's what I noticed the most was just, it's more digestible than the shit we used to have. Yeah. Uh, you know, growing up. Bro, <laughs> just don't even me get up. me started on that. Yeah, those diarrhea know. mixes that we used to make. Oh my God. Oh, so, so you're giving them whey protein. And then are they just using it by itself? Are they making shakes with it? How are they using it? Yeah, so they're making shakes and in, in combo. But for the most part, I got buy-in from their parents to get more ground meat and and make sure that the 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 majority of their plates that they're eating every single meal is you know that 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 meat focus. And then in between, they're they're taking their shakes. So Dude, you're taking them. They're doing all the work. They're becoming like from kid like boys to men. 
You yeah, know? that's crazy. Yeah, that's so awesome. And we saw a little bit of that because we did a seven on seven, uh, kind of little tournament for the first time the other night, and it was like it was cool to watch them run around and be competitive with their new like jacked bodies. So it was it was fun to see. We'll see how it goes once they put pads on and start laying the hammer on people. <laughs> that's so I'm awesome. About that. I gained I gained seventeen pounds. Um, I think almost seventeen pounds sophomore to junior year and I was really dedicated uh, to doing that mm -hmm. and I remember going back to school and then of course you get comments and the girls notice see I was that not, was, that was, was my window too yeah really? I was not me at all it, it was like a grind for me all the way into my like I would say like early 20s well, until I became a, a personal trainer yeah but you had a growth spurt late right because you yeah, were no, short I was still, and then I was, you got tall hell of, yeah, yeah. all at once and right? I was still growing all the way into my 20s like I didn't stop really growing until about 21 so Wait, I think, I think it, when did you have your up. height growth spurt junior was, to senior year Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I was a, remember I was a point guard freshman year, 5'3". So I was 5'3 wow. as a freshman. Oh, you were a little You're guy. You're a point guard too, yeah. Yeah, I was, I was a point guard. guard, dude. So I was five. I was a point guard in middle school and in first year. Hold on. Freshman. You were 5'3 up until you were junior or no, then you grew a little bit. Yeah, I probably grew like an inch or two, but then I really shot up to six foot when uh, my, my senior year. Five inches? Yeah. I oh grew, my God. Yeah, I had a huge, I had a summer where I, I grew a ton. Like, were you, right. Did you feel awkward? Yeah, I did. So I used to play soccer, and part of why I stopped playing soccer was um, my my body awareness changed. I, I, well, yeah, I also, it's like you took your soul and plugged it into a new yeah, body. Yeah, I, I, I also had like a little bit of a gap of playing. Like what, unfortunately, where I was living before, they didn't have a soccer team. So like soccer was actually my original sport. So as a kid, I, I played over seven years of soccer. And then I had a little bit of a gap where I didn't I didn't play. And then I played, and it also happened like during a growth spurt time in my life. And boy, I just, I was like a giraffe, like a baby giraffe out there. Just did not feel. Measle. And it was really, it was actually a weird thing for me because I was, I was really good. I was really good at so soccer. I was better at soccer than I was basketball when I was really young. And yeah, I just, I had lost that. Luckily, I, I was able to, I, I stayed consistent with basketball during that crow spurt. So the transition of the new body was less dramatic. So yeah. what, it actually benefited me in basketball. Basketball, I became a big man, a power forward. Or even a small forward towards my junior junior year uh, that could handle the ball, so I could handle the ball as a point guard, and then I got taller, and wow. so then I had so it actually benefited me as I got older and basketball. So I had my growth spurt early. I was five uh, eleven as a freshman, and then I got up to six foot. So I only gained. You were an inch. five eleven as a freshman. Yeah, so I got so much bigger than me. As a I was freshman. tall, but I was one hundred and thirty five pounds, uh, so about one thirty five. Mm. Then I got up to one. 65, uh, like right around sophomore year, and then sophomore or junior year is when I got up to like 195, yeah. or from sophomore to oh, senior. you went 195, okay. yeah, sophomore to senior, I got up to 195, I think, or 190 is where my body was, and I got over 200 in my 20. But I mean, I was oh, bro, obsessed, I didn't, with I didn't even see, anyway. I didn't even see, a, I remember breaking 180 pounds was a big deal to me, and that was in my 20s, wow, uh, so and I was already over six, I was six three at that time, yeah. So I was I was 183 pounds I think when I started as a trainer and I was six three and I think uh, man one it was a creep to 190 it was a creep I really didn't learn to be able to really fluctuate my weight uh, up and down until my my late 20s. now when did you figure out the like probably, oh probably I'm not eating I'm not eating enough 20s. Uh, yeah, mid 20, like around 20, between 23 and 25 range. Cause I was playing basketball, uh, like even recreation basketball. Even when I stopped playing organized ball, I, I love the game so much. I played every day. So you're just burning shit, tons of calories Ton. and you're probably like, Oh, I ate yeah. a sandwich. Yeah. So and I was doing like basketball every day in the gym and working out. And then on the weekends yeah. I was doing things like snowboarding, wakeboarding, like yeah, see, I, used, I because I was so obsessed about lifting weights or whatever, I'd read articles and books and they were like, you got to eat more. You got to eat more. So I was just, I was just pounding. Yeah, I thought I was, so I was doing the same thing too, but just imagine the amount of calories I was burning. And so I just was, and on top of that, my intensity, I was training cause I was that guy who was just hammering the shit out yeah. of every muscle group like crazy and i was eat, well, oh, eating it but i was no i remember so an article specific article i think it was an iron man magazine and and literally the guy in there wrote if you're i don't care how much you're it was like a, it was like a paragraph or a couple sentences that i don't care how much you think you're eating if you're not gaining weight it's not enough and i went crazy i'm like that's it 
I'm adding a weight gainer shake to every meal. Yeah. I'm drinking a gallon of milk every day. I'm going to make a, a chicken breast tuna fish uh, shake. You set which the I would, alarm when you got to wake up. Oh, like, I, did, I did all I did that. that. I have memories of like having like dinner with my family and then sitting down like 20 minutes later after dinner and like having a gainer shake with a peanut butter and jelly and like taking a bite of the peanut butter just, and jelly just and then washing it down. <laughs> and washing it down. I mean, a lot of that noise. Just, yeah, but like, oh, oh, yeah. Like this over the table, you know, that's yeah. like, oh, I hated yeah. that. Setting know. alarms at two in the morning and having a, a mileplex shake that I would pound Dude, at like I two got, in the morning. I got in trouble because... Because, you know, I would buy, I worked young. I was really young. I was like 15, maybe 14, no, 14 when I started working. And I'd buy supplements on my own. Which And my mom was always like, you're not allowed to take supplements. So I'd buy them and she wouldn't see them at high or whatever. And I'd, every once in a while she'd see me make a shake. But I got in trouble once because she would try to talk to me while I was trying to pound this, <laughs> this shake in this blender. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't, I couldn't talk because I'd throw up. Like I'm so like <laughs> at the limit, right? So I'm like doing this and I'm like, <sighs> yes. you know. Breathing, Ooh, sweating a little yeah, bit. Yeah, sweating. And she kept trying to talk to me. And I was like, Mom, I can't talk right now. And then she got really mad at me. Oh, you're force feeding yourself. Ah, she got pissed off. She threw my shake away. And I had another one in my closet. I'm like, oh, man, that sucks, Mom. You're going to stop my games. Yeah, I, got- <laughs> I mean, I, I, I didn't realize you guys had that, that much success that early on. I mean, because to me, a, like a kid having success like that, that's got to feel really good. I struggled forever. I just yeah. didn't. Yeah. I feel like I couldn't unlock. That's like, insane. Yeah, yeah, I gained I got- like 20 pounds when my, uh, it was going into my junior year. Yeah. So it was like, I was like one. 65 then 185 my my later like junior to senior year and i was like well, i was like 510 something like that did you get stretch i got stretch marks yeah stretch yeah. marks in my chest dude my legs yep. like yeah, yeah. It was especially Actually, i got all that too it didn't come until my 20s yeah. didn't happen until after in fact i used to use in personal training now were you guys proud of your stretch marks? i was always excited oh, of oh course. yeah i got stretch oh, marks more of course yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, of course i was yeah. super proud of them when i was a kid <laughs> so i used to use i had this picture of so after we graduated high school we all did this hawaii trip and i had this picture i used to keep in my presentation binder when i was selling clients training and it was a picture of me drying off and I, so I must have been, let's see here, I'm, I'm 20. So I had to have been like 165 or between 165 and under 180 because it was before I was a trainer. Uh, and I'm drying off. You can see like my rib cage like completely. And so I used that as like where I, and then I was like at 180 something as a trainer, like of the my transformation. Yeah. And, and still even then, I mean, that wasn't that much, but it was a big deal to me that I had actually yeah. finally moved that much. Yeah, you know, I want to be, I mean, I want to be clear too, like all the stuff I'm saying that I did or whatever is not what I recommend. It was nothing about it that was healthy. It was definitely rooted in insecurities. It did take me a long time to kind of work through that or whatever. Um, and then, you know, obviously my passion and love for fitness and, and health is connected really to, for, for, to people. I really love working with people. Well, this also, and, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just going to say, I had an experience of that today. So today I, you know, I got, you guys know, I go to club sport in the morning, work out there, um, sometimes and I'm working out and there's this older guy. So he's got to be in his sixties mustache, kind of overweight a little bit. Um, but I, he's there every, every time I'm there, he's there. And this time I saw him and he's got one of those, um, it's not a wheelchair, but you know, when you get like surgery on like your, your knee. ankle or something, you have that little like kind of push cart thing where you yeah. press your knee on mm-hmm. and I'm watching him go from machine to machine and exercise. And then I see him go in the sauna and I see him all the time. I, but now here's the deal. I don't talk to anybody. I'm pretty unapproachable. Uh, when I work out, I, I know I have a look on my face that probably says, don't talk to me or whatever. But anyway, after that, we're in the steam room and then he starts kind of talking to me and I'm, you know, at this point. I'm more, I'm, I'm so impressed with the guy that I always see him. I was actually thinking like, man, this guy's always here. So I start talking to him. I'm like, man, I see you here all the time. He goes, oh yeah. He goes, I do this all the time. It's really good for me and whatever. And he goes, I just had Achilles tendon surgery because I hurt my Achilles. I'm like really? And you're still working out? He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, I noticed you training your other leg. You know, that's kind of counterintuitive. Why are you doing that? He goes, well, I just feel like I feel better. I said, did you know that you're reducing the amount of strength and muscle you're going to lose in the leg that you operated on? He's like, I didn't know that. So we're having this whole conversation about rehab and training. But I see this guy, and he doesn't look like he's a ripped or anything like that. He's just an older guy. Super consistent, though. And he does it every day for himself. And I felt so – it was so cool to talk to somebody like that. And uh, anyway, his name is Jim, if he's listening. I told him to listen to the podcast. Really cool guy. Anyway, go ahead. No, back to what you, we were saying about the mistakes that we made as as kids and stuff like that, and, like, and you're not advocating for anyone doing that. You know, the cool part – today and and this highlights what why i like all the tools that we have that we didn't have access to like part of my big like big aha moments was like finding out how much i was burning like i had no 
concept of that. Like we yeah. didn't have any of these tools. We didn't have Fitbit. We didn't have body. You remember your first certification and leaving being like, Oh shit. Yeah. We, I, we, I we had everything wrong. We had no, we had none of this stuff to kind of get, at yeah. least get an idea. And it was body bug was one of the first huge pivotal moments to me when it came to nutrition. And it wasn't like I learned something about macros. I just learned about how my, my body was burning. And let's say the thing is off by 20% didn't matter. It was like, Holy shit. I am burning way more than I than I'm consuming. And yeah. then they we didn't have apps to track. So for me to be really consistent and to be really precise about like I had to write everything down in like a journal and then go back and check. And so, you know, I did that, but like man, to do that all the time was so laborious. Where now you have this app where it's like you finish type you can't even finish typing chicken, it already populates for you. It's like yeah. so easy to get a good idea of how many calories you're consuming, yep. how much protein you're actually intaking in relation to how much is your body burning on a regular basis? What days are your high days of burning? What days? I mean, that that information for me was so enlightening that it completely changed the way. And that was what really took me off on really being able to manipulate my weight and build muscle or lean yeah. out was I just having an idea. I think it's still challenging yeah. today to get good information, but there's so much more, um, so many more options Whereas when, when I was young, there weren't very many options and all the options were bad. All mm -hmm. of them. It was like, where's, where am I going to learn? Flex Magazine, Muscle and Fitness, Iron Man Magazine, and then the big guy in the gym. And there really was nowhere else, right? I'd go to the library yeah. and I'd try to look up obscure studies, which, you know, try reading those as a 16 year old kid. It was like learning how to read, you know, right. higher like, what's or Bo Jackson doing? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to be doing what Bo Jackson's doing. <laughs> oh, dude, speaking of the gym, here's, okay, so I just talked about something really cool. Here's something a little mean, but whatever is hilarious. I see this guy working out on the assisted pull up machine and he does some reps, you know, and then he moves the, 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 the pin down, adds more weight, and then he does more reps and he adds more weight. And I'm standing behind him and um, waiting. Like, can you mind if I jump in? He goes, yeah. He goes, uh, it's really crazy. He goes, the more weight I put on this, I just feel stronger. Stop <laughs> it, dude. I swear to God. Stop I swear it. to God. Oh, man. I said, well, you know, that, that's the weight that's lifting you. Like, oh, oh. I'm going to teach you something hey, right now. Because I could say, hey, after he said that, I said, no wonder he was so proud. He's in the whole stack, weight. bro. Yeah. He went the whole stack. And he's he's like, like, this thing's getting easier. See, bro, I could do the whole it stack. It lifts you. <laughs> Is that true, bro? That's true. He really did. I know. swear to God. Oh man! I mean, it was like his first time working That's out. That's embarrassing. You know? So I kind of we I giggled, you know, and then I said, and then he laughed afterwards. He's like, "Oh, I was so confused." Like, yeah, <laughs> dude, I'm killing it. Yeah, it's your first time working out. You do the whole stack on this machine. What do you think's going on? If only it worked like that. Yeah, that'd be fucking awesome. I know, dude. It's, yeah. it's that's hell of funny. You know, you brought up the other day. I wanted to tell you that I actually I came across it after you said it. You brought up the uh, all the teenage boys doing the going to see minions yeah so what's the deal okay so first of all it's called gentlemen minions it's a viral tiktok thing oh teenage boys sorry now what's fascinating about it what i thought was so interesting aside from it being like a silly tiktok thing that's gone viral is that the uh so i saw this as the stats and I, I don't remember them to be precise but it doesn't matter i don't need them for my point the this one of the smallest demographics of people that go watch the old the other minion shows are teenage boys and so they have blown this thing up because they have. It's become a viral thing for teenage boys to go get suited up, go do it, and then they video themselves on TikTok. And then it's who would have guessed? And and it's now a created a whole new genre idea. of of the like the what was in the past the one of the smallest pool of people that were watching those shows. So in the past it was like younger kids and then like parents. Yeah, teenage boys don't watch. Well, it's, it's better yeah. than Pony Boys. Remember that oh, <laughs> with yeah. the My Little Pony creeps. That, oh, like, that was God. a thing. Yeah, dude. Oh, I, these are men that grown men. I didn't know those. They loved My Little Pony yeah, so grown much. Grown men. Yeah. That they called they call themselves Pony Boys. Is I that think what they That like was that. a thing. Yes, dude. I did not know that. Oh, Doug, look it up. Look oh it it, my! Can I tell yeah. you something right now? It, it was like slightly like a sexual thing. It was yeah, really yeah, creepy. Yeah, yeah. Like tell me you're tell me you're not a freaking creep without telling me you're a creep, right? Yeah, it's discuss. It's weird. I did not know that. Yeah, they're like infatuated. Like These are the same ponies. guys that like to wear diapers at home and always looking. You know? Yeah, exactly. Well, like you that. know, you know, this also brings up another thing that I came across that I don't know if it's true or not, and so I don't know if you guys can fact check me or maybe Doug can. So I I, I was watching an interview that Andrew Schultz, the comedian that we all like, yeah. was doing. Brony, bronies, not bronies, bronies. 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 Oh, bronies. Uh, can you pull it up, Doug? It's not I think I have heard bronies. bronies. I've heard that as a slide. I've heard someone call someone a brony. You fucking brony. Oh, so that's where that comes from, bro. They dress up like their favorite My Little Pony. 
Yeah. They That's yeah. where the term comes from, brony? Yeah. Yes. I did not know that's what that is. Yeah. I've heard that as a slide. Look. Oh. <laughs> It is special. This is dude. the first time I have ever heard this. <laughs> hey, you know who I feel bad for? Wow. Can I just say this did right now? Did you know about this, Kyle? I feel bad I did not know about this. Can I tell you who I feel bad for? <laughs> what? I feel bad for women. The pool of men that you can uh, date right now. Yeah. <laughs> like, if you're a guy, Look and, at that guy and you're not uh, a brony or a weirdo, like, you can probably score like pretty yeah. like, wow, attractive, like, high ranking yeah. girls now. Yeah. Yeah. That is really, really. Weird, and I, I had no idea about I don't that. Understand. And I have heard people call somebody a brony before. It's now, special. I'm going to bring it back. Yeah. I'm still going to call some people bronies now, Dude. too. I'm still <laughs> going to use that. Please. Now that I know what it is. Yeah. So anyways, the Andrew Schultz thing. So I'm watching it, and we're talking. About, he's talking about TikTok. Is this true? Okay. He says that TikTok, the algorithm is different in China than the algorithm in the United States. It's true. Can yep. you fact check that, Doug? It's true. Because, no, I've already checked it. I, I, you know, it's through Rogan. So again, I'm just going off of what Rogan is saying. But Which he says a, it's true. Uh, according to him, there's, you know, TikTok is actually not the same no, name I, in but, okay, China. By the way, wait, wait, what's the name for the one in I'm, China? I'm looking for it yeah. right now. It's, uh, boy. I so uh, while you're looking for Douyin. it. What is Douyin. it? Douyin. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what he says, okay, is that the algorithm in China, like it, it basically it populates the things that, like the things that that China wants their their society to, like their youth, know, yeah. Yeah. yeah, educate, like be. education and yeah, like athletic uh, performance, science, yeah, yeah and science, awards, achievements, yes, like yeah. all these, all these, and so it populates that for the audience. Over here, it's like I ate yeah. four Tide Pods. No, so, that's and what, then they cut it off. At that's like what he says. Here, it's something. like stupid dancing, eating Tide Pods, destructive, gentle minion bullshit. Bathroom, like, dude, they've had challenges where they've just like yeah, blowing up things. stuff. It's like total is that true? degenerate bullshit. Well, it's according to Rogan, again, this is not fact-checked. Uh, he says, China's version of TikTok celebrates academic achievements and athletic perf uh, achievements. It's all science projects, all yep. these uh, different fascinating things. And he says, they also have a youth mode, which features a limit for kids under 14. Uh, things shuts off after 40 listen, minutes. Listen, it's not just TikTok. All social media, movies, media, it's all filtered through the Communist Party what? of China. 100%. What do you mean all? The, the state all, controls okay. all like of Instagram? it. Instagram? What do you mean? How? Okay, okay, mean okay. Have you I ever mean, seen- that, I understand that one. It's owned all by- All of it. It's owned by China. Oh, no, no, no. on a social credit system. No, there's a difference with TikTok. With TikTok, the theory, which I believe, is they're purposefully promoting bad shit or Oh, whatever. that's my point. Here. That's what- with other media, they just filter it. Oh, you mean China does? China does. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I, I'm talking about U.S. I mean, I don't give a fuck what China does. They, yeah. can, go, they can do whatever they want to their society. I care about what's going on in our oh, society. Oh, they're promoting stupid shit here, for sure. That's go the, on TikTok that's the look part at the that's stuff. Crazy. That, look at the popular That's what's stuff. crazy to yeah. me is that like I, I'm, I know China filters what they want their, their society to see from Instagram, Facebook. Well, I, I, I know that. Have you ever seen the ads? Well, we just came out of Pride Month, right? Have you ever seen the ads that a company will do like BMW's Pride Month ads here and then the ones they do in I Middle showed East you guys China. that. I was yeah. blown away by that. I was the guy. So well, different. The guy that we follow that I like his content. What's his name? I think it's Anomaly. Anomaly? Oh, I know who you're talking about. Anomaly? Yeah, is, yeah, is yeah, yeah. I think it, it is. That's yeah. his Instagram. Yeah. yeah, I really like the stuff that, he, that he's been putting out for a long time. And he shared that. It, that blew my mind where he pulled up, like you said, BMW and some of these big companies. And like all, if you go to their website, it's all got the, the, the flag and yeah. it's all Pride Month, stuff of like that. But if you go to other countries, it's none of that. Nope. It's such bullshit. Yeah. Like talk about the ultimate virtue signal. That's why like people, where where they're the where where gays are least persecuted, you you're you're gonna put all that stuff up there. Where they are, you're not gonna put anything no, up there to support not. them. What? Well, the, I mean, look, yeah. like if people can't see well, through that, yeah. dude. Like, come on, I, it's, it's not pandering. authentic. It's about money, and it's about yeah, just like contributing to what they think the culture is asking of them. Well, it's such a joke. I know, I know, it's fake. But hey, look, a company's job or goal is to is to give the consumer what they want, make more money. Yeah. Um, and if That's you, the and, bottom line here. and they also have to go through governments in other countries. So like Disney will make a film like the light year one where they had, I believe it was a gay relationship in there. They kind of made a big deal about it. They didn't air that in China or in the middle East. They're not yeah. going to air that. In yeah. fact, I think they banned that film in some of those countries specifically because they showed a, a same sex couple mm -hmm. in there. But here, of course it's, it's going to go out. That's it's just wild. the way to, I know it's pretty, it's, it's pretty crazy. Speaking of social media and stuff. Twitter right now, and I'm, I'm, I don't know if this is true for other social media platforms, but Twitter right now is going on a, a spree of suspending accounts. And I, I want to call this out because I want people to pay attention. 
before any major election, mm. social media ramps up mm -hmm. the accounts that they suspend. They ramp it up. Why? Well, the argument is that their employees, uh, you know, they 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 want to, you know, kind of move the needle in one direction or another. But pay attention. Right before election season, they start to act Dude, very very differently. There's a massive bias. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, obvious. Yeah, and they, and they do that. They I do mean, that is right that before. more correlation than it is causation? Though? Uh, I mean, is well, it really, is it really just that? I mean, it's like. Well, I mean, it's it is interesting because they're always banning. You know, what I'm saying is there's never a time they're it not. It really banning, ramps but up. You though. see it. Yeah, you see it shift quite a bit during election season. I'd, yeah. be, in, I'd be interested to see how much that is, bro. Like, I got a because first of all, there's all okay. Every two years, there's elections going on. So mm. right, right, it's usually so, like the six months leading into. The election, and I and yeah, I would love to see some stats on like literally what you just said. Six months to election, is it that dramatically different than just six months before that? I yeah, I believe so. You're right though. We don't have numbers to, yeah. to show that because they they hide and, and they guard their numbers. I mean, look what Twitter did when Elon demanded to see how many bots and what was going on. Like, oh, we can't tell you. Yeah, we don't know what's that going went on. through. You know that right? He's getting it right. Uh, I don't know. Is he? Oh yeah, it all got. You pull up uh, Elon Elon's purchase approved. Did, did you hear what he's what his little his comment about? Remember how it got? It just got revealed that he's got two more kids with another person mm -hmm. yeah. that came out. Yeah, he said. And that. then he didn't say anything about it. And then he said. Um, Something like depopulation threatens <laughs> threatens the earth, so I'm just doing my part or something like that. Bro. Oh my god, oh like, Elon, oh my bro, god. oh my god, great innovator, <laughs> terrible dad. Elon. Come on, man, you gotta be. Yeah, that's not. Does he really good. have like eight? Is it that many? Nine. He has nine kids. Yeah, and I think it's with four women. Bro, he is. He's the Sean Kemp I mean, of well, tech. Hey, at least he's gonna financially take care of him. The guy's a billionaire, so he could have you know a hundred kids and they'd be fine. He's just probably not very involved. I'm actually, I'm actually lives. surprised that he doesn't get more heat for that because I was unaware of that. I've never seen anybody post or talk about that very much, and I feel like that's something that people would try and pick him apart for. Well, I mean, he's like I said, he's he's a, he's an innovator, highly productive, uh, but doesn't seem to be like a great dad. But then again, I don't know if he, how you can balance I what mean, he does. How many how many leaders and yeah, professional many, athletes? Yeah, have you seen the relationship many, Steve Jobs yeah, had with his kids? Exactly. And the, I mean, yeah, it was, it's so again to judge yeah. people on that's a little. Like what are you? What are we doing? Yeah, I know. So, I Musk's deal is not a, a sure thing here. It's not approved. No, it says it's in peril. Actually, right now, this yeah. is eighteen hours ago. It was uh, oh. no. yeah, yeah. See, that's what I thought. So why, 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 why is it? In because peril? I think they don't want it. They're not telling them the whole bot situation. Yeah, and unfortunately, it's the Washington Post I'm looking at, and they make me sign in in order to see their articles, oh. and I'm not going to do that. Oh. So. so would that devalue the stock? Like if they found out that most, yeah. you know, a majority of what do you think would happen? Oh my well, that's god, that's what I mean. That's yes. why if you went in, he's like, hey, thirty percent so of the then, people in here are fake. So then he'd be able to. Would he be able to reduce his offer then? No, that? no, no. His offer is what it is. But I mean, imagine is, any. Are you sure he'd about that? Pull out. Yeah. He, he could pull out though. Um, yes, he, he could. Can. However, the, the, now they're threatening a suit if he pulls out because it could affect the stock price. It could affect lots of different things. I see. Yeah, it's but a touchy he, it, situation. I mean, I mean, if if because they're, they're held liable because those numbers are public. If they if those numbers are wrong, they fall. They both can sue each other, and they can make it a right. pain in the ass. For yeah. Either person. I mean, Eli, so. Eli, Elon wins that though for sure. If if you if if the the filings show that the company is is this real, and he finds out that yeah, thirty percent of fraud. it's not. I th I agree with you because the value is based off of that. I agree exactly. with you, but I don't know numbers. how the supply. I don't know what the what the regulations look like i don't know what that would look like in court um i have yeah, no idea i think I more than anything just make it a pain in the ass you yeah. know and kind of stretch it out uh type of deal yeah. did you guys hear um uh james con passed away i don't know yeah, yeah the 80, actor. 82 yeah he was uh sunny in the godfather mm. and did a lot of yeah he just he just passed away it's kind of sad that is sad yeah i liked uh, i liked he's him as in an 007 actor. too right? was he yeah i'm pretty sure in 007 mm -hmm. was he done uh i don't recall What's that one movie with the woman who was his uh, stalker? He goes, uh, you're my favorite. I'm, a, I'm your biggest number one fan. You oh, that movie? Yeah. Misery. Misery, yeah. Oh, he was in that movie. Wow. Oh, that was a great, it's a classic. Hey, of all movies, the one scene that was the hardest for me to ever watch was the one in Misery, where she puts, she has his- uh, Pushes down the, pushes down the, the no, stairs. No, no, I love that scene. The hobbling thing. No, because he gets in a car accident. Breaks Spoiler alert, shit, movie's been out bro, forever. If you haven't watched it, it's <laughs> yeah, a pro. yeah. He's, he's an author, gets in a car accident. This woman saves him. She lives in the woods. Turns out she's like a stalker fan or whatever. And he's, he realizes this and he's like trying to heal because his legs are broken and he tries to escape. It's actually one of the few Stephen Kings that I really like. Yeah. And then and, and what she does, because she doesn't want him to go away because yeah, yeah. she wants him to write another book for her. Yeah. Is she takes his legs and puts a two by four between them. Remember this? And she fucking whacks the side with a sledgehammer. Yeah. Oh, 
It's the worst scene I've ever seen. Oh, it's the worst, dude. Yeah, Yeah, I can't handle that one. Anyway, (laughs) really crazy. I I just saw something that is. Is there still um, flat earthers? Is that still? Is there still community (laughs) that believes that? I think that they. uh, Yeah, we thought the internet was going to make everybody so. So I saw. Well, I saw a. I saw this. I forget. I wish I could give the the Instagram page. It's a really good Instagram page that I follow. That I saw this uh, (laughs) this clip on. And I guess there was a Netflix documentary that Flat Earthers did that was called Behind the Curve or something like that. Oh, I think I saw this. And Is this where the guy, he, he put he, together this test? And he disproved himself. And his, then he disproved himself? Yes. Yeah. The look on his face. Yes. <laughs> yes. So... Uh, so basically, one of the ways that you can you can tell that the the Earth is curved is there's this like light test that you can mm-hmm. do. laser. It, okay, yeah, because well, laser's perfectly straight, right. right? And so, and you basically you I, you cut these holes out like these perfect s- cylinders out, and you have these you know I don't know like it's like one mile apart or something. Yeah, like yeah, and then and then you basically flash the light through, and if the Earth is flat, it should come straight through on yeah. the other side, and you could see it. And so they set that whole test up. And the dude's like, and they're talking to each other back and forth, like, all right, shine the light. I don't see it. He's like, I don't see it. He's like, no, no, shine it through. I'm I'm shining it through right now. (laughs) We'll raise it up. (laughs) And he's like, he raises it up. And And then then it, it? yeah, then it lines up. (laughs) The look on his face, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, fuck. (laughs) Lizard people changed my laser. Oh, man. (laughs) I swear. This is real. We thought the internet was going to make people smarter. Oh, it didn't. It didn't yeah. at all. It made a lot more dumb. No, people. it just showed you how easily we're manipulated and how e- how bad we want to be in groups. That's the power of documentaries. I swear, dude. Like, and YouTube has mastered all this with like being really convincing uh, with the kind of content they put together, and so people are just like. You know, they, they just like throw their brain in the garbage can, just let somebody else think for them. So let me ask you guys this. Okay, so, you know, world superpowers have been doing counter psyops or whatever on each other forever, yeah. right? Where they try to fuck with each other's populations. I wonder how much of, of that is pushed by other countries where they're like, you know what, let's put together some videos yeah, and make Americans believe that. You know, there's people that live underground that run the world or something like that, right? Yeah. And they'll do that and then they'll have you know, people commenting underneath that also, and like, like, I wonder how much of that happens. So, you tell me the whole QAnon thing isn't like, you know, orchestrated by, you know, one of the intelligence agencies to, you know, to, to manipulate and mess with that I, subculture. I so, when, so. It, when it comes to like these types of conspiracy theories, where I believe it is when there's lots of money to be had. That's where, like, I'm less of a conspiracy theorist of like someone trying to take over or manipulate for some bullshit reason or that they're just but out to get somebody. This has happened though, and we've literally used that tactic to to overthrow governments. Yeah, we have. It's, yeah. it's, it's power. So it's, it's like, why yeah. why wouldn't you think that would be applied to us? I, well, no, that's, that's yeah. what I'm saying. I'm saying if there is if there's money or power to be had, like there, there's where it's believable to right. me. You know what I'm saying? Like right. it's, I don't just like all of a sudden think that this, like a conspiracy theory, oh, this is what's happening. It's like, well, why? What, so why? there's this theory that yeah. if you take a society and you systematically break apart uh, long held assumed beliefs, things that were fact, mm-hmm. and you slowly create uh, doubt in dissent, then they'll start to doubt and not trust their leaders, their government, each other. And then they're in this position where like, I don't believe anything. Yeah. And then they become very easily manipulated. Now you've got control. Well, it's like your great Twilight Zone episode you just talked about where the aliens zoom out and then it was just to see how long it took for us to start to kill each other. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, dude. Oh, you want to hear about some cool tech? Check this out. They, they, I'm going to, I'm going to read this to you because it's pretty rad. They, um, have nano uh, a company created this nanobot technology where it brushes and flosses your teeth and cleans them essentially. So check this out. These are petite and multifunction multifunctional robo dentists that do the work of brushing, flossing, and rinsing, all without you having to do any of that. So essentially, I'm going to read what it is. It's a micro swarm made up of iron oxide nanoparticles a magnetic material that naturally assembles into shapeable structures in the presence of a magnetic field. So by manipulating the magnetic field, the researchers were able to move and transfigure the mini robots into bristle and floss esque shapes that could adhere to every dental nook and cranny. So through this mental, through this so magnetic like field, bring a magnet across your face. Yeah, and it just to reconstruct cleans and particles. scrubs your whole, your mouth. That's cool. That sounds, Isn't that wild? That sounds bizarre. That sounds crazy, right? Yeah. That's cool. I thought that was super cool. I have a super cool thing for Justin. If Doug could look it up for me, because I, I I just came across an article and I hadn't had a chance to dive in to make sure that it's uh, available yet. But 
Spotify is now doing a karaoke feature. Yes. Right. Really? <laughs> See, I figured you right. Yeah, no, I'm serious. I think, I, and I think that's brilliant. Like how pop, how popular is karaoke? Yeah. That, or just people who so want to you shoot it up on your screen at I don't home know. on your TV. No, you might be able to can... post it on. Do you have do you have like social media? Pages I don't on know. It's that, so I just saw the article, so I was like, oh, oh wow. wow, that's going to be interesting because I know how popular karaoke is, and the fact that none of these music apps have thought to build that. I mean, you go, so you have to go buy a karaoke machine right now, right? You go yeah. and like, why did not somebody think like, why did not iTunes, why did not one of these other or iHeart Radio or any of these other companies not think to do this? And Spotify, it's got to be something where it's you can be share tricky it. with the. Um, because you know how it already is tricky to put somebody's music on your videos and all that yeah. in terms well, the, of like uh, licensing. Well, I, well, okay, think about this. Spotify already has, if you watch, if you listen to music on Spotify, there's a tab at the bottom that shows lyrics and you hit it and then yeah. the, I can, as he's singing it, the lyrics come up. So it, why would that be that much it's harder? It's a to, sing-along feature. So what does it do <clears throat> there? You sing along with it and you get a score. After, oh, and see how good you sung. You know oh, what? They gamified it. You know what's funny about that, which oh, I that's think this is really cool. You know what's funny about this? I... I pro at least a dozen times in my life I've encountered a friend or family member that really is convinced that they could sing really well. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And then you hear them sing and then yeah. you realize that they've been lied to by a lot of people. Yes. Like a lot of your friends and family have never really told you I the truth. I call them out too. I yeah, like that's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> you don't even sound kind of good. You sound really bad. Yeah. Has that ever happened to you? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's oh, so yeah. cringy. But right? I love it though. Like, I don't know. A lot of people get really uncomfortable with uh, sitting through like really, I'd like, I love really bad karaoke. Oh, that's like, so weird. I get, uh, so when oh, someone is bombing, it, I get so Me uncomfortable. If, I gotta if you have like a speech or you have like, a, you're, you're, I just you're performing. I love watching everybody oh, I get so It's a weird feeling. I I, I don't it. know why. Yeah. And, so, you know, sometimes I'll bomb. Like, I'll go up there, I'll sing a song. I don't even know the lyrics. And I'm just like, ah, fuck, what do I do? And, like, you're just kind of stuck. And it's like working your way out of that is half the fun. Mm -hmm. You know? Speaking yeah, no, of uh, like bombing, that. do you guys hear uh, uh, one of Biden's latest uh, speeches? <laughs> nice oh, transition. Oh, Lord. Wow. <laughs> wow. First of all, he said something very interesting. He said, America is a nation that can be defined in a single word. I was in the foot him uh, foot, foot excuse me. Oh, but besides <laughs> that I swear was, to God, this week, it's weekend of Bernie's He's half Swedish chef. No, you know, you know what he's, beer, skibir, you know what he said? He's reading a teleprompter and then as he's reading his speech, he goes, read the caption again. It is noteworthy that the percentage of women who register to vote and cast a ballot is consistently higher than the percentage of the men who do so. End of quote. Repeat the line. Like he's reading what they wrote to, <laughs> as a note to him. No, he did not. Yeah, he did, bro. Dude, he did. so do you know that I feel like okay, if, dude. If, I'm, if, if, if I'm it wasn't for so much, if there wasn't so much hate for Trump to get rid of him, and everybody was so such a bad taste in my, mouth, I feel like Biden would be railed on twenty four seven. Yeah, by everyone. Well, he's like, already been. A, he's been. He's he's a pariah right now in the Democrat Party. They're they're like throwing him out. Finally. Oh yeah. Like like finally. But I mean, it was just like a couple of weeks ago, he's going on Jimmy Kimmel on these shows Dude. and they're like hand feeding him like questions and making it so easy for him. Like talking about how much he likes ice cream. All the oh my, I can't believe, yeah, people aren't more upset about, because obviously like gas prices are ridiculous for him. Everybody knows that. You've, everybody's feeling that. And then is it true it came out that he was like selling Ga Bro, like oil. They sold yeah, but you reserve our reserve, reserve oil, oil to China to a Chinese company. Yeah, that, you tell me how insulting still, that is. That his son may be invested. Head in the sand about that, dude. There's still people that are are believing like, the bullshit. That, that how are they not getting? Angry? This is all Putin's fault because Putin invaded over there. And that uh, it doesn't matter who was the president. We were going to go over I there and I go save Ukraine shuffle. no matter what. Like, I know. It's like, the spin is insane. Yeah. Well, like, okay. Let, let, to be fair. The inflation issue, which large a result, largely is a result of us printing tremendous amounts of money out of thin air, that's a bipartisan issue. That's right. Republicans did it. Yeah. Democrats did it. Nobody no voted doubt. against it. No doubt. And anytime somebody came out and said, we got to cut spending, guys. We can't have all these programs. We can't be doing yeah, this. Everybody shut them down. Nobody go, wanted to vote for we that. We don't want to do that. So, yeah. but, but it's really, I mean, Biden is, he really, it's weakened to Bernie's. It really it's, is. It's really it's scary. It's so painful to watch. Dude. But it's, it's just painful. It's also funny. It's also a little it's, funny. I mean, you have to laugh about it at this point. I mean, it's like, it is what it is. We go, do, but do, but do, but do. Yeah, but like, <laughs> what? like, is there any kind of qualifications left for being like mentally, like 
fit and like having all of your faculties in in check like who's checking that and at what point is there like they somebody that decides like well you're actually not mentally capable of of leading or directing I mean, any of this how, how, how wild is it as we as we evolve as society we get smarter and more technology and we're we're more evolved today than we were a hundred years ago yet when you look at the presidents like the the, the direction that they're going like literally like we just said we just had Trump We're before worse this. And worse and worse and worse. Yeah, yeah, dude. Like the direction we're going with the leader of the country, the leader of the country is really kind of scary yeah. when you think about well, it. Everybody smart's cons- going into their own business and like you know going that direction. It's like I I kind of get that. Like who really wants the job to begin with? Oh, like, with, never. There's like never no more perks years. to it anymore. Never in a million years. All right, I'm gonna go back to cool technology because I gotta Thank I gotta you. talk about one of our sponsors. This is really cool. So we obviously work with Caldera skincare company. We love them, right? Check out one of the things they do to get uh, extracts from plants, which is brilliant. It's something called cryogenic grinding. So this is not <laughs> that a, sexy. I yeah, don't know this why. is not. They, a, they yeah. dry freeze the plant and then they grind it up. Yeah, this is not a strip club in in, in, the, <laughs> in Antarctica. <laughs> so what it is is it's sub-zero temperatures using liquid nitrogen, which creates a dry and cold atmosphere that eliminates the possibility of oxidation. So that's rad because one of the problems is, yes, when you- So if you were to grind it up without freezing it, you would lose some of the- The fats and the oils, they'd get oxidized, which then makes them lose their antioxidant, anti-inflammatory properties. So like, for example, if you take a fat and you treat it a particular way and you oxidize it, that fat now becomes far less healthy- it becomes inflammatory. Right. I mean, oftentimes you, we, come we, we cook it, right? If you boil it yeah. or you, you know, put a flame under it or whatever. Yeah, that. it generates no heat. And research has found that this method, method preserves 15% more nutrients than conventional processes. Pretty interesting, that is right? Interesting. That, yes. is, that is fascinating. Yes, because I, I, mean, I wonder where there's other applications for that. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a good question. No idea. Well, anywhere where you extract anything. I mean, I mean I would, cannabis? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I, where I was thinking. Right yeah, I know you were. It's like, <laughs> yeah, sure. I acted stupid. What yeah. do you mean, Adam? <laughs> <laughs> well, so you use, like, that's what bubble, ha- bubble hash is made with really cold water, right? So you use really, really cold water to pull out and extract from the plant. That's how that's how bubble hash is made. Mm. So it's rather than using like a gas or, you know, what do they use? Before, yeah. So right? if you blow, but- if you blow butane or like what uh, like yeah. to make those types of hashes, I mean, then you get all that shit in there. Right. Oh. So bubble hash is now that because it's, it's a chemical and it's much, it's much higher. You get a, a higher potency. So it's stronger, which is why everybody wants you to do that. But bubble hash is still stronger than just regular is marijuana. Is they call the wax? It's like the pure concentrated. No, what, no, no, like- no, no, that's a wax. So, okay. I mean, there, there's all kinds of slang terms for what that is, but there, it's all an extract from marijuana. It's concentration. Yeah. yeah, it's all concentration from from marijuana. And they all have different street names for it, but that's but bubble hash was one of the original. I mean, that's been they've been doing that that process and, and you basically have all these different bags and they're it's they're all like, you know, filters, straining filters. Mm. And you put it in a in a in an ice bucket cold water and you let it strain through all of it and then what you get left over is what turns yeah, into Yeah, so no hash. no chemical solvent solvents. Yeah, so, so, so it's, it's that's the, what they're doing with Caldera. It's cleaner that way. Yeah, yeah, so there's no chemical solvents. Yes. There's, there's no heat that's being generated which oxidizes oils and fats. Mm. Um and so what you end up with is a higher antioxidant um, you know, quality oil that you put on your face and this is why it works so much better. For me the telling sign was just cuz my obviously I don't use I never really use skincare products before. So I can't compare it necessarily to other stuff, but my wife now, she always uses skincare stuff. Get rid of her old stuff. Now she uses Caldera exclusively cuz she's like this is the best thing I've ever used. Yeah. So I think this is part of the reason why. Okay. Yeah, that's that's really I, you know it sounds expensive to do that. Yeah. I, I mean, well, Caldera is not cheap. If well, you look at their serum and compare it to like you go to Target to get another serum, it's going to be more. Yeah, you pay for what you get, but though. you use less. First of all, I don't use very much. Yeah, and the effects it's are more they speak effective, yeah. way more. Yeah. Way so. more. Hey, check this out. A company we work with called Bio Optimizers. Uh, they've put together a truly irresistible offer that's only good while supplies last. So check this out. You can literally get a free bottle of their best-selling enzyme supplement called Masszymes. It's really good digestive enzyme supplement, so it helps reduce bloating, improves protein breakdown, so it helps you digest the protein into its amino acids, gets to your muscles more effectively. It helps with constipation, other digestive issues. So you'll get that for free, literally, with nothing else. You don't have to sign up for a subscription service or anything like that. You just get a free bottle of Masszymes. Plus, they're going to throw in a couple free eBooks, and all you got to do is go to our link, 
masszymes.com. That's M A S S Z Y M E S.com forward slash mind pump free to get your free bottle of Mass Symes and try it out. See if you like it. You probably will. I love it myself. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Elizabeth from Florida. Elizabeth, how's it going? How can we help you? It's going well. Thanks for having me on, guys. Um, I had kind of a three part question, and there's a lot of context into it, but I'm going to try to not over explain too much to save you on time. Um, my first question was I'm torn um, with the current situation that we're in, um, inflation and all of the mess um, between. It feels like I'm torn between choosing financial health or nutritional health. So, um, kind of how, like, if you were to have any pointers on how to prioritize nutritional health for someone like me who is in a very tight budget. Um, the second question was, um, I feel really good when I'm around 120 grams of protein uh, per day and for me, that's easiest with our budget with things like yogurt and, um, cottage cheese and like deli meat. But those are, I, I feel like they're not high quality foods, I guess. Um, and I have a mild dairy sensitivity. So I'm also torn in that if I decide to choose between, um, like gut and internal health and avoid things like dairy, or if I shoot for my protein kind of regardless of the cost. Um, and my last question is when limited with nutrition, how would you suggest to optimize training or exercise for weight loss? Okay. Great, Start. great questions. By the way, a lot of people are feeling what you're feeling right now, uh, with the changes in yeah. prices. So I feel for you. It, it sounds like you got a family, so I totally understand the challenges, but I need more information from you. So what's your ultimate goal? Are you trying to lose weight or gain weight or build or what's your goal? Lose weight a lot. Okay. Well, okay. So um, I've, I've got a lot to lose. Okay. So check this out. Okay. I don't know if this is a surprise to you, but eating less is cheaper <laughs> than eating more than eating more. So in other words, let's, if we look at the hierarchy, uh, yeah. if we, uh, if we look at the hierarchy of, 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 um, priorities with diet, it goes calories, then macros, and then you can look at things like organic and quality and that kind of stuff. Okay. So if you just looked at your total food budget and all the food that you're eating now, and if we changed nothing else, but you ate less, you would lose weight and improve your performance and health and save money. So that's number one. So we actually killed, I don't know how many birds with one stone, like three there, right? So, so many birds. <laughs> just, just keep everything the same, eat less of it, save money, lose weight, health is better, financial health is better. It's beautiful. Okay, now let's move to some of the other parts of your question, like uh, sensitivities. Um, protein powders are very cheap on a serving per serving basis. You can get plant protein. You can get collagen protein, which is very inexpensive in comparison to foods. You can also buy, I'm sure you don't know this, you're, you're a mom, so you probably already know this, but you can buy oftentimes spe on special uh, food in bulk, like chicken thighs or ground beef um, or eggs. And on a, on a per serving basis, they tend to be very inexpensive. Um, so I would focus yeah. on that. I would not worry so much about things like organic, non-GMO, grass-fed until you've hit those other things. That doesn't really matter yeah. if your calories are high. It doesn't make that big of a difference. So I wouldn't worry about the quality stuff yet. I would worry about the other stuff first. And like I said, just eating less is going to save you money as well. So I, we solved all those issues there. Also keep in mind yeah. a healthier version of yourself will be a a a, a better mom uh if you're working you'll be better at work you'll be better you'll everything yeah. about you if you compared you right now versus you even healthier all those other aspects of your life will improve including the financial one it will bleed into that yeah. it may it may not feel like a one-to-one -one right at first but it eventually will play into that when when you are healthier you are in, you will be better in all aspects of your life so it, it will it will pay its dividends. So just keep that in mind. And on it, like to Sal's point with the the food, like boy, I, white rice and and meat, ground beef, 
and turkey and chicken thighs in bulk. Frozen vegetables. Yeah, yeah. frozen vegetables. I mean, that's like the cheapest you could go. Right there. When it comes to food. Those, 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 yeah. Those, those, and, yeah. That, and make that the staple. Then potatoes, potatoes, yam, sweet potatoes, uh, and yeah. bu and buying these things in in bulk and sticking to those main those main foods. Yeah. Uh, you'll getting you'll getting great shape. Yeah, now that. I want to help you out with the workout part. Okay, that's where we really can help you out. I think um, I I'm going to send you a couple workout programs that require no to minimal equipment, so you can do them at home if you need to for convenience. So for whatever reason you can't go to the gym, you can at least follow the workouts that we've programmed that require no equipment or like bands or suspension trainer. Um, and we'll also give okay. you a discount code for suspension trainers. So you can get one really cheap from us for, and it's good quality. Okay. So I'm going to send you map suspension and maps anywhere to help with the consistency. Uh, but I, I, but I want to go a little further with the nutrition part. Are there foods mm -hmm. right now that you eat or that you purchase that you could do without that you think are probably contributing to the, the, the weight issue, um, and that you could probably get rid of. Is there, is there anything off the top of your head that you could think of right now and be like, yeah, I could not buy that and I'd probably help me lose weight and it would save money. Not off the top of my head. We actually, we actually eat like probably a 90% like a whole foods, less processed, not a whole lot of sauces. Um, not off the top of my head that I can think of. I think it's more just quantity. Okay. What about that 10%? You said 90%. What about that 10%? That's just like when we're out with his family or with my family or, okay. you know, when we go out, which is very seldom with <laughs> financial issues. Yeah. Are so, you a coffee drinker? No. Okay. Yeah. Are you, so, so you're, you're eating whole natural foods. You're just eating a lot. I guess. Okay. Uh, That's I would, it seems to be. so cut, cut the easiest thing to cut, um, just in terms of, uh, you know, essential the easiest thing to cut is carbohydrates because uh, they're just not essential. Elizabeth, have you tracked before? Have you actually ever done like a, a yes? Okay, so when you when you track and one, how long ago was that? And then when you did, what what did you see? I well, I've tracked on and off for maybe five years. Um, my most recent time, I actually just stopped a couple of weeks ago because I was on a trip with my family. Um, and I was eating around 23 to 2,400 calories. Okay. Oh, cool. Um, that's a pretty good metabolism. That's a, that's a pretty good amount to be able to cut from. You have some room to go. Yeah. I also am breastfeeding. So I, that also just oh, yeah. confuses me a little bit. Yeah. You can, you um, can, you can cut your calories while breastfeeding, but not too aggressively. If you start to notice yeah. your milk dry up. Um, then, then I obviously be very careful because that's a priority, but you can cut a few, right. like two to 300 calories and then observe your milk production. And if everything looks good, then you're okay. If you start to notice your milk production really goes down, um, then you might have to wait until, uh, you can, you're, you're on the weaning process when you stop breastfeeding. Yeah. Uh, Elizabeth, I, I She's only got a few more months. I, oh, okay. I'm, I'm going to have, uh, I'm going to have Doug give you a free access to our private forum too. I, I would love for okay. you to. Uh, either use uh, my fitness pal or fat secret for me and track your food yeah. uh, everything for a week uh, and and share it with me in there so I could see and I think I could give more specific tips and advice because I, I definitely think it's important since you're breastfeeding too that we want we don't want to give generic advice of cut calories here or there yeah. uh, without seeing exactly what you're doing so I'll put you in the forum for free you do me the effort of of tracking for a week. Uh, so we can peer in mm -hmm. a little bit more specific and then and then share that with the with us guys in there and then uh, and then maybe we can give you even more specific tips on where like little hacks or tips to to add or what yeah. potentially to take away from great advice. Yeah. yeah, that would be good. Yeah. Sounds wonderful. All right. So I'm sending you maps anywhere and map suspension, okay? So at least so you'll have some some workouts Thank you, you so could do much. if you don't have access to to a gym just for convenience. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then make sure you say right. hi that to us wonderful. when you get make sure you say hi to us when you get in the forum, all right? Yes. Oh, I will. Thank right. you. And then when you when you vote, make sure you vote for people who don't increase inflation. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that means. We're from Florida. We're doing a good job. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I didn't say anything else. All I said was so political. Don't vote for people who raise inflation. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You got All right. it. All right. Bye bye. Yeah, the the bulking on a budget 
is way more challenging than cutting on a budget. Of it's course. Just true. Of now, course. The, the challenge with cutting on a budget is convenience. And this is what a lot of people don't necessarily right. either like to communicate or maybe don't, you know. Uh, Especially when you like variety. Well, and I want to. Like, like they want the fast plus they I want to the see. I want to see this diet for a week because 90% whole foods and breastfeeding uh, and around 24 or 2200 calories or so, something's not adding up for me. Yeah. So I want to see. I feel the same way. Yeah, yeah. I want it. That's why. I, but I it's want, hard to know. You can't know. That's why. I don't, that's why I didn't want us to take jabs at like advice because something's not adding up already for me. Yeah, that right. I want to see some some real data that I can go. Okay, this is what maybe you're 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 grossly under eating something yep. and maybe something's off a little bit because uh, that you know, if I have a client. Okay, uh, if I got a client to follow 75, 80% whole foods. They almost always- Have a tremendous success. Yeah, tremendous just, success. just that. And, and if she can't think of anything off the top of her head that is an offender in her diet, and the only thing is the occasional eating out, which doesn't sound like it happens a lot, yeah. uh, something is off for me. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, and, and that's the thing is that we'll just be guesstimating at that point. So I'm glad you kind of went in that direction. But yeah, because th this is where I would then find out information- Say with like beverages, for instance, and like sure. the calories. I knew in that you were direction. going that way, like because, but I didn't want to jab too hard in that direction because I don't know. Uh, and also too, like with some of my clients, it was like nuts or things that have high calorie yeah, that right. are just snacks that make their way in. So yeah, we, we'd like some more insight there. Totally. Yeah, yeah. Our next caller is Amelia from Canada. Amelia, how can we help you? Hey guys, thanks for having me on. Can you hear me? Okay, we yeah. can. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. It's so cool. It's like better than being a celebrity. So, um, so I'm obviously I'll just jump right into it. Uh, I'm 19 years old. I've been working out for about the last four years. Um, but I've been kind of floating on the same like physique and strength levels for about one to two years now, partially just because I'm focusing on other stuff like school and, you know, I haven't been super, super committed, but I enjoy the activity. Um, so this summer I'm working at a mill and in each shift I get about like 20 to 30,000 steps. I'm walking and sweeping a lot. Um, and I'm also in a wedding party at the beginning of September. So I thought that this opportunity with the high activity level would be like a great opportunity for me to like lean down like an extra, like 10 pounds or something. Um, and then after the wedding in September, when I go back to school, um, I'd like to get, I'd like to be a bit leaner at the beginning of that and then start like a bulking phase um, to build strength and muscle. And I feel like in my, all my years of training, I haven't spent a lot of time in an extended period of like a surplus to really build a good foundation. Um, and I'm five, four. So when I've tried to cut in the past, I found it challenging to stay consistent on like the 1400 calories roughly. Uh, so it'd be nice if this building phase puts me at a slider, um, a slightly higher maintenance at the end of it. Uh, so essentially my question is two parts. One, how do you best recommend taking advantage of this activity level to burn fat while minimizing muscle loss and metabolic adaptation? Um, and then two, how should I go about transitioning into my building phase in the fall? when my activity level will drop dramatically um, without reverting back to just like my past physique. So oh, good question. It is a really cool question. And I actually, oh, okay. yeah, this, no, it's a great question. And I don't think there's going to be a wrong answer here, but I actually would flip your strategy Insta okay. instead of, because uh, I get where you're going because you're taking all these steps. So you're like, okay, I'm going to be burning these extra calories. So then it'll be hell easier to lean out. But because you already have struggled with kind of leaning out and you're kind of low calorie where you're at at 1400 calories in order to lose, I actually would take this as a great opportunity to really start to increase your calories and speed your metabolism up. Therefore, when you go into the time when you're going to be a lot less active, you can you you're, you're going to be able to cut back on the cut back on the calories, and you have this faster metabolism, and you'll still be at a healthy like place hmm. of calories. I like that. that. Sense. How many steps were you taking before? Like how, how many steps do you take normally beside uh, well, when you're not at the mill? During school, like during when I was really busy studying, probably like six to eight, and then I ramped it up to like ten to twelve. I should mention I am eating about like eighteen to nineteen hundred calories, and I have like a, a app for weight that tracks my trend. And it says I'm losing. It was like one point two to one point three pounds per week, and now it's more like zero point seven to zero point eight. That's just because I do four on four off. So like during my four on shift, I'm like just regimented routine, and then on my four days off, I'm like it's summer, so I maybe eat a bit more. But I'm not. I am losing weight on like. 1800 to 1900 right now just because okay. of the high activity I'm not, I'm not like stuck in a rut i okay. just don't want to get there, you're a, you're you know? a badass at 19 you know all this stuff yeah. you've been working out for four years oh I, yeah, i've been just... listening to you guys for like four years oh that's great <laughs> i appreciate that yeah. okay you know what's cool about this yeah. okay so you're already taking you were taking six to ten thousand steps before it's going to go up to 20 to 30 30 thousand steps that additional 10 to 20 thousand steps let's just say is about 250 more calories a day okay and i'm being conservative but let's just say it's 200 250 calories a day. 
what you can do is you can increase your calories by 100 and you're still going to be in a natural deficit. Yep. So you can actually bump your yeah. calories a little bit and still get yourself leaner and focus on building muscle. I would not cut because you're increasing your steps so much. I wouldn't go on a cut at the same okay. time. The cut is going to naturally yeah. happen because of the extra steps and because it's novel and it's only over the summer. So I would bump, if I were you, I would bump my calories by 100 to 150 and then do the steps and you'll still probably be in a slight deficit and you'll probably still build a little bit of muscle during that process. That's why I like the idea of actually kind of like thinking in a more of a reverse diet during this time. It's like, in fact, my personal goal for you would be, okay, let's try during this time to actually con continually increase calories without gaining weight. Because you're doing all this extra activity, mm -hmm. can I keep getting you to add a little bit more calories, a little bit more calories while we're doing all this activity? That way, when we get at the, at the end of the summer or whatever, we're now got you up to, you know, 2,400 calories yeah. and you haven't put on any weight really. And so even if you haven't really leaned out much or whatever, but you're eating 2,400 calories, we're in a good position. In fact, I what you could even do is yeah. when you're done with the steps and it goes back down to 10,000, keep your calories at 2,400 and that now is a slight bulk. Yeah. So now you're in a natural slight bulk and yeah. then you'll probably build some muscle. I like that strategy a lot better. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So that's what you would suggest like for when I, when I, when my activity little drops, I wouldn't don't necessarily worry about changing over yes. the, the calorie maintenance. Exactly. Yeah. So I would go right now, okay. like, or right, right when you start working in the mill, if you've already doing it, I would bump your calories by about a hundred to 150, keep them there. And Adam suggested, you know, moving it up incrementally. So long as you gain no weight, I like that at the end of the okay. job, when you're done with it, keep the calories the same. Now it's a surplus and then focus on building. So now you're kind of hitting both goals. And if anything, what might happen is you're probably going to get leaner because of the of the gain muscle. You're probably going to get a little leaner, mm -hmm. uh, but you're just going to have some, the more muscle is what's making you leaner because now your body fat is a smaller percentage of your body weight. And you've probably heard me talk about, if you've been listening for this long, you've probably heard me talk about this. I would also, when you transition that job, I'd also transition the programming I'm doing. So whatever you're following right now or the summer, yeah. follow that while you're also slowly increasing. And then when your job switches, also switch the stimulus. So yeah. let's say you're, I don't know, are you running anabolic or what are you running right now? Or what program are you I, Yeah, I'm doing anabolic. It's not my first time doing anabolic, but I am doing it two to three times. And then I bought um, Maps Power Lift. Oh, okay. So I was going to do that oh, cool. in September. Oh, I yeah. love Beautiful. that. I That's love awesome. that. That's perfect. That's and great. I'm in a surplus. Oh, okay. oh, yeah. I love that. Are you Are you going to be? Are you going to work in the fitness industry? Is this I, something you, you want to do yeah. for a living? Yeah, you're on point. Uh, I thought about it, guys. I'm in, I'm in engineering now because I was like, oh, I, I like people, but I don't know if you guys are so sympathetic and I appreciate it, but I'm not sure if I could do the same <laughs> thing all the time with people who don't want to well, put in look, the effort and stuff. I'll, I'll tell you what. If you like to <laughs> make money, yeah. if you like to make money, stick to engineering. Yeah, 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 I know. That, yeah. Well, that, expi yeah. that explains your approach, though, is yeah. your engineer mind for yeah. sure. So I see that. Okay. I'm, yeah, I'm very. I've been like planning this out in my head. Yeah, yeah. and you got a great um, strategy. I love. I yeah. love the idea of switch. And you know what's great yeah. is the the advice we would normally give someone at that time is okay. Now you're going to be in the surplus. Don't freak out about the scale. <laughs> Just think about strength. And Maps Powerlift is a perfect program to follow, where all you're trying to do is get stronger. That's awesome. Yeah. Are you? Are do you have yeah. both programs? You have access to them both. Yeah, I have. Yeah, I have. Um, I did. I was running performance, but then just because of the, where I moved, it's like there's not a lot of equipment in my gym. So I, that's why I've transitioned to anabolic just to like maintain strength. I just, you know, I'm like, I don't want to. And I've been eating pretty high protein, too. Um, for power lift. Yeah, I'm just looking like I again, like, do you think like six if I spend at least six months, say like mid September to like February or March in a in like a decent deficit or decent, decent bulk? Um would that be adequate? Just because, like, I'm again, like, I just want to, oh, I really yeah. want to see my yeah. strength just like skyrocket. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. no, you're you're gonna yeah. be fine. Yeah, yeah six yeah. months is plenty. Three months yeah. would be great. Even. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just watch your calories okay. and see how high they get. It'd be great if you could get your calories up to twenty eight hundred calories, not gain any weight. What a yeah. great place to be in, right? Yeah. I mean, I know everyone's different, but I'm always baffled that like I'll see girls who are five four and they are eating like twenty four to twenty eight hundred calories, and I'm like, wow. Like so, yeah. I I definitely like to just try it out and see and stop focusing on like, Oh, I want to be a bit leaner, you know? So no, you got the right at it, especially at your age. That's, yeah, it no, makes me really happy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, love, what, really love what you're doing. Can I give you a program? I want to give you something. I like you. <laughs> you, you oh, want any program yeah. that you don't We're have? I'm not going to feel good if we don't. Um, okay. What do you guys, I mean, I've thought about doing aesthetic, but I'm like, you guys say it's so high volume and I'm like, I don't know if, um, I have performance. Do I have, you, you have Oh, symmetry? maybe prime pro. Oh, you, Prime, oh, I Prime get Pro. Prime Pro. I'll send yeah, it over yeah, to you. Yeah, you my, my nan's just starting to do that too, and I'm like, I want to help her, so I 
figured the time probably be great. I think. Right, perfect. Did you say your yeah, nan? You're helping that. your grandma with workouts? She, yeah, she's like, well, she gets inspired because I'm here. So she, I'm living with her for the summer. So she's like 70. And I was like trying to think, I'm like, okay, what would Sal, Adam, and Justin do here? Yeah. Um, so I think Prime Pro would be good. What right. a yeah. great kid. Yeah, yeah great. Your parents raised a great kid. Good, <laughs> yeah, good, yeah, good job. Yeah, thanks for calling in. I hope that helps you. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Have good a great day. Thank you. Have a good one. I really liked her. Yeah, man, yeah. No, nothing makes me happier than hearing a young, you know, somebody young have the right attitude towards fitness. Because at that age, it's very common. I was this way at that age. Mm -hmm. It's very common to be so focused on the looks and the fads and the extreme type of shit. Yeah. So to hear her at this age, um, she found us at 15, huh? Right. She I mean, totally gets it. She's going to get, she's going to get through, like she's going to not run into a lot of the problems. A lot of young girls run into because she kind of understands how her body works and what feels good. And she's already valuing strength. Like that's oh, yeah. Yeah, great. she's talking about is on point. That's great, phenomenal. great, great. Strength. And, and just so you know, uh, or the audience knows that she could technically have gone the other way. She could. I just like the other way personally. That's all. That's, I mean, it's not the, the, the other way. It's a, it's a better long-term strategy. I think sure. so. Yeah. I think, I think it, I think it's going to set. Cause it's going to be a natural cut. She's doubling or tripling her steps anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's no need to cut your calories at the same time. And she's that. at a place where she definitely has room to still in increase her metabolism and so i think that's a good direction but it doesn't mean she was wrong with her initial thought and i i love what she's already setting herself up for so pretty excited for her our next caller is juan from texas juan what's happening man how can we help you hey how are y'all good good all right perfect so i'll get right into my question so i've been lifting um since i was in high school but decided to make it a priority once i got into my senior year so that's been a total of about six years um on and off with uh the occasional spring break um, vacation trips, stuff like that. So my workout split to begin with was kind of the, your bro split, but then I found maps, uh, maps programs in, uh, my freshman year. So I have maps and like maps split maps, aesthetic maps, power lift, and then maps anywhere during the pandemic. Cause I couldn't get into the gym. Right. So, uh, recently I started losing a little bit more weight, um, with my diet and everything. And I noticed an imbalance between my left and right trap. Um, so once I saw that, I also started noticing an imbalance in, you know, my back and just kind of trickling down. So I wanted to see um, what you all had to say, if there's any kind of unilateral exercises, stuff like that, that I could directly go into. And I have the time to uh, like time that I can set aside to do it specifically. Um, just want to know what the general guideline is. Map symmetry, brother. Yeah. Are you trying to get a free program? <laughs> <laughs> we, got, we got you, bro. No, so we got you. The, the thing. <laughs> Matt, the the Matt, thing I didn't know is... Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, well, I didn't know exactly. I know, um, like, MAPS uh, symmetry is, like, more unilateral, but I don't know if it's something I could add on to, like, MAPS aesthetic or MAPS split or something like that. No, you run um, it alone. No, it's it's a program by itself. Yeah, yeah. yeah follow MAPS symmetry. You'll love it. Listen, it's a dope program. It'll balance you out. You'll build muscle. You'll get stronger. And because you've run so many of our programs, when you go back to one of those other programs, you're going to see so many benefits. Yeah. It is, a, it is such an effective and needed workout program. So many people would benefit. That's why we wrote yeah. that program. It's the I know what's good for you program. It, it, it is really effective. Trust the process. Follow the program. You'll get a very aesthetic from, f physique from it. And then when you go back to your traditional training, you'll notice some good strength gain. So, uh, hands down, map symmetry is the program you need to do. the the one The one piece of advice I'll, I'll remind you going into it. You've uh, probably, if you've been listening long enough, you've heard us say this before. When you're doing unilateral work, always start with the weaker side and allow that to dictate what you do on the dominant side. Right. So don't let the don't let your strong side lead the workout. And then try and keep up with it. Let the weaker side always run it, and then mirror that. Even if you could do several more reps on the strong side, always stick with whatever that. I'm glad that, you said that. That, that weak makes side. a big difference. Perfect. Uh, and then, what do you think I should run afterwards? Oh, have, whatever. Have, have everything else. What's what? the what's the last what's the last maps? What, what were you just doing recently? I'm on aesthetics right now. Oh, uh, I mean, you can go back to you anabolic. can go back to split. You can go back to anabolic. R really doesn't matter. Run I would it, go run back it, to run, run anabolic after that. Yeah. Although you know what, the end of symmetry is like the yep. uh, five by five, yep. like anabolic. So maybe go into what do you have? You have anabolic. You have split. You have aesthetic. You have power lift. Yes, sir. Oh, I'd love to see power lift. Yeah, power lift. Yeah, that one. I'd love to see power lift after that. Perfect. About how long is maps symmetry? Uh, nine weeks. I want to say. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So it'll be just on that Boken typical time. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Yeah. We'll send that over to you, Juan. 
Perfect. I appreciate it. I appreciate it so much. You guys have a lovely day. You, right got, on, you got it, man. Thank you. you got it, dude. Does does Jerry intentionally like try and like make them match up as far as like Yeah, as another kid, right? Yeah, I know. That's uh, high school kid. Yeah, freshman year is when he said he found I the- wish, I wish I had a podcast or something to listen to at that age, man. Right. I did. I followed I tried. I looked for so- information so hard. And all I could read were these massive I wonder supplement if I, I wonder if I would have. Would you listen to us? Do you think you would listen to us? I would have. Um, I'm well, cool, yeah, man. I know you, kids are a little no, different. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cool. I wouldn't. Yeah. I, was a, re- I was hey, reading textbooks, that's bro. That's the problem. So? That's the problem is I think I'd be like, I would, my, I would be too naive. I would think I'm too cool for you guys. Really? Yeah, I would. I'd yeah. be like, I don't know. You kinda, he's old. He's you don't old. think you would have liked yourself? No. <laughs> You're pretty cool, dude. No, no, dude. I don't know. Hey, dude, I'm aware, I'm aware well, enough that I'm not cool anymore, dude. I, I find myself constantly having to hide myself I know I, I, know I pretend like up. I am, bro, but I know yeah. I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, yeah. No, I, I, I would have loved it. I loved information. I read. I tried to read tech books yeah. and, and studies. You're probably most likely. Well, do you think you would have? Well, just, I don't think I would have, no. Yeah. I, I mean, You're I just, like me. I think I would have been so driven in just that one direction of like athletics and we don't talk about it enough on the show to be honest yeah. with you guys i would it would lose my interest but um it, that's that's sort of the funny conundrum right like i'm even helping the, all these high school kids there's probably like two of them that even listen to us so yeah. it gives me like better perspective i think within that i think there's a lot of room there uh, for more young people to to, to attach you know to, yeah the to, conversations we have uh i mean I didn't become really growth minded until like my mid twenties. Right. So when I was in high school, I wasn't. I you know the self awareness was still just coming around at that. I would have fast forwarded our normal like our non fitness. I would have like fast forwarded to like the studies and tell me what to do. That's exactly. Oh, I would have so, done the opposite. Yeah, I would have yeah. fast forward all your talking, and I would have gone to Justin and I talking about yeah, sports exactly. and well, so There you go. You do think you're cool. <laughs> Oh, these guys are liars and cool. <laughs> yeah. you Who's de- that nerdy guy? That guy? Nerdy you would have DM'd yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, that nerdy you're guy. cool too, Sal. Uh, you're cool too. Hey, but I mean, I think, uh, I mean, back to Juan, right? Yeah. We went off on a side tangent there. But I mean, his uh, the, the very, uh, this is why we wrote that program. I mean, yep. symmetry yep. is specifically for that. I, I mean, nobody has a perfectly balanced left to right, right? Everybody is off yep. a little bit. Everybody will benefit from that. Yeah, thing. it's yeah. I, I, and, and I can't we, recommend it enough to everybody. We get asked a lot, like, where does it go? Like, if you've already been running maps, insert it next. I mean, it's like if you've ran any maps programs already, then insert it next and then yeah. go back to yep. another It's just going to bolster your body for anything else you're going to yes. pursue. Totally. Yes. All right, our next caller is Christopher from New York. Excellent. How can we help you, man? Hey guys, thanks for having me. Appreciate that. Um, uh, I'm just gonna I'll read over what I have here, just so I don't miss anything out. Uh, I stumbled on onto you guys about three months ago. I heard you how you were railing against uh, CrossFit. I love that. So uh, I really got <laughs> well, hooked. My kind of guy here. <laughs> I got I got hooked, and I listen to you guys almost every day. All all the past ones, all the new ones. It's really great. Um, here's my background. I'm 52 years old. I'm five eight currently about 141, 142 pounds. I'm a captain with the New York City Fire Department for the past 20 years. I also do a lot of fitness training at the Fire Academy with up and coming firefighters. I share a lot of your information with them, hundreds of candidates. I give a lot of your uh, a lot of your take on uh, fitness and how they can get better. Um, I do a little personal training on the outside. I recently worked with uh, LA Fitness. Uh, so here's what's going on. I've, I've been a, competing in powerlifting for the last about 20 years. Uh, I've also been competing in natural bodybuilding for the last five years. I earned pro cards in bodybuilding, uh, uh, men's physique, open and masters. Um, a week and a half ago, I competed in my 12th show. I prepped for about 10 months. I lost about 28 pounds. I got to about 3% body fat, and my stage weight was 137 pounds. A little lean. Um, now the show's over, I want to move focus back to powerlifting. I, j- I just can't do this to myself anymore. I put myself through a, a, a lot older and my family can't stand it. So I, I like powerlifting much more. I'd like to get back into it. Um, like you always say, you gotta, I love the journey more than the goal. So it, it, it's kind of like losing its luster for me, uh, bodybuilding part of it. My nutrition, uh, for the last year, I followed a whole food plant-based diet. With little or no processed food, uh, it works for me. It's very sustainable. I know how you got it, but it, it, it seems to be a natural for me. Uh, my calories, six weeks before the show, I was around 1,800 calories. Since then, I've been reverse dieting at about uh, 2,500 calories. My protein, like you, like you suggest, is 
point eight per per uh, body weight of uh, but sometimes it you know I get at least that but probably more my activity my steps average between fifteen to eighteen thousand steps per day cardio the only cardio I've done in the past year is just walking I, I take sales advice I, I uh, walk in the rain snow cold you name it I, I I make sure I get that walk outside. Um, I'm, pro I'm currently doing the uh, map split. Um, I responded well. It helped me for the show. So that, that program worked really well for me. Uh, medically, I'm hypothyroid, uh, extremely sensitive to the cold, probably because of the thyroid. Uh, I have sleep apnea. I need to get a blood test because I know my testosterone is uh, sinking down. And also my strength is... Um, I have no physical limitations. I've studied and practiced powerlifting. I worked with a coach in the past. I also have a certification in powerlifting myself. Um, but I do feel that I have lost my mind muscle connection to, to those lifts. I, I don't, it doesn't feel the same as it used to. And it's probably because I've uh, drifted off a little bit. Uh, supplements. Um, in the past year, really all I've taken was just multivitamins. Um, about a week ago, I had suggestions creatine, the PCAAs, and a protein supplement. My training, I, I train exclusively at home and at work. I train every day. I, I like to train at 4 a.m. I, I, know, I know people I work with think I'm crazy, but I, I find it soothing. and I find it uh, works for me. Um, then I follow that by my walks. I know my sleep is a problem. I have sleep apnea. I always have to use the bathroom in the middle of the night. Um, trying to sleep in the firehouse is almost impossible. And I'm scouts, um, but since the show, my quality of sleep got better. Since after the show, my, my quality of sleep is much better than it was, and I feel it's better on the plant-based diet. And that leads me to my question. My question is, what's your advice in transitioning my focus from bodybuilding back to powerlifting? And do you think MAPS Strong with MAPS Powerlift is the way to go? I like MAPS Power. Well, two things. First off, I appreciate what you do uh, at the fire department there. We're always very appreciative of uh, of that that work and the lives you guys save. So that's thank you for that. But uh, let's address what you're the question. First of all, you got everything dialed in. You yeah. you know what you're doing. You've done this for a long time. I think Mass Powerlift would be a great program. You're on the reverse diet. You're going in the right direction. The, here's the advice I'm going to give you. Um, I think you should work with a functional medicine practitioner to address the hyperthyroid and the sleep apnea and, and the health stuff and the hormone stuff. I think that's going to give you the biggest bang for your buck in terms of, you know, adding something new that's going to give you some, pay you back some dividends. I really think that would be a good idea. We have a four. I do, have a, I do go to an endocrinologist for the uh, thyroid. Uh, he evaluates me. Actually, uh, it's coming up soon, um, but he does evaluate me for the, uh, the, Hypothyroid. So it's it's so. Di it's different than okay. So an endocrinologist, they, they're very good with the hormones. Obviously, they're the, right. the best in the world with that. But a functional medicine practitioner, what they do is they look at the entire picture and how things are working together, and they'll work with your hormone specialist, your hormone doctor. So there may be some things that you're missing that you're not quite uh, sure of. Which is why I'm going to recommend right. going to a functional medicine. Not only that, but an endo will always try and like, here's a prescription, you know, take you're lacking this. Here's this hormone to fix this right. versus a functional practitioner will look at it and go, wait, there's some holistic things that we may be able to do first. Maybe we can increase magnesium here, or add some zinc or work on maybe like, you so. got heavy metal. I mean, you know, but it, yeah. maybe they'll find something. Maybe they won't. Uh, but based on what you're telling me, that's the only new direction I would put you because Otherwise, you know your shit. I mean, I can tell by what you're saying, how yeah. you've competed. You're certified you've been in all these things. You've been yeah. training a long time. You know your stuff. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you anything in fitness uh, and really with nutrition that I think is going to blow your mind or surprise you. I think I'm going to tell you stuff you already know. But the functional medicine practitioner, if, unless you've worked with one before, I think you might, there, there may be some value there. Now, maybe not. Maybe you go and they're like, oh, everything's perfect. I did perfect. work with somebody, but I, you know, they uh, prescribed uh, the testosterone cream I didn't feel good about it. I didn't like it. I felt like they talked me into it. I don't think they really. Yeah. So the functional medicine practitioners that we would recommend don't recommend hormones. They're, they're not hormone specialists. They would recommend you to a hormone specialist if, if they thought that was the direction you needed, you needed to go. So, so we have a forum on Facebook. It's free. It's mpholistichealth.com. Go there. Ask some questions. 
And if you like, so, so we've, we've, you know, we've gone through and we said, these are the best people. Some of the best people that we think people can work with, ask some questions, see what you think. Cause I don't, there's really nothing m much else I could tell you that I think will help you aside from going in that direction. And your, and your question about power lift and strong, I would say, yeah, they both are going to work for you. So I'd run power lift first, run strong, and then go back to power lift. If you're trying to time a meet, I would run it like that, right? So I would go, obviously, you want to run power lift. Power lift is designed to get you ready for a meet. So right. you, if you had a meet in mind, make sure you're running power lift. But toggling back and forth between power lift and strong would be a great program to to work on the big lifts that you want, you want to get strong. Yeah, but to be honest, you're certified in powerlifting training. You've been doing it for a while. You competed. Um, you know, I would look at MAPS Powerlift and then I would modify it based off of what you know about your body. Because mm -hmm. remember, it's a program we wrote for the general audience, but you've right. got a lot of experience and you're going to look at it and you're probably going to say, you know what, that doesn't work too well for me. I've done it before. I think I want to add a set here, take one off there. So that's what I'll recommend as well. Typically, I tell someone to follow it to a T, but someone with your experience and knowledge, I would say, look at it as a framework and then modify it based off of what you know about your body. Yeah, you know a lot about the performance end of everything. And I think that, like, Sal's right in terms of that. We don't have a whole lot of suggestion in that direction. But, like, just taking care of your body, like, from a, a holistic health perspective, I think just peering into that, leaning into that a little bit further, uh, you know, with some of these issues, the apnea and everything else, I think would be massively beneficial for your long-term um you know, performance and everything else that you're involved in. Yeah. yeah at the bare minimum, getting into that free form, it's free. And Dr. Cabral comes in there every other week and does live questions. So you get a chance to interact with him for free. Uh, and then maybe take some, do some of the tests, do some of the hair test and, and blood work. I've done, I've done that in the past. You have. Okay. okay. Good. I have done that. Uh, I saw that the uh, foods that uh, I have a high sensitivity to and metals and stuff like that. I have, I have done that. Okay. okay How long yeah. ago was that? Um, maybe two years ago. Okay. Yeah. You know, I, I, so I, I try to do it every year, um, just because things can change. Like for example, I, I saw that I had some mercury in my blood, which when I tested before, I didn't have that. So, um, obviously something I'm, I'm exposed to something that's causing a little bit of a mercury, you know, mercury buildup in my system. So now I'm following a protocol to get rid of that. But look, here's the deal. You may find that you're doing everything right. But my, my point is, of all the directions I could point to you towards that the for potential benefit, that'd be the one. I, I don't think me coaching you on powerlifting is going to benefit you more than maybe what you already know. I don't think I can you know, help you with nutrition unless I really break down your diet, but that would be a whole hour of you and I you know, having a conversation. There's not much I can, I can advise to you where I think the dividends could be valuable except for what I said with functional medicine. That doesn't mean that you're going to find anything new or cool or anything that's going to help you, but it's the, the the potential is the highest in that direction just based off of what you told us. Yeah, all in all, man, you're kicking ass. I just yeah. had Doug do a screenshot of your thing. It's now my wallpaper, so this is my goal. <laughs> this is you're my you're my goal for 52 years old, bro. Yeah, so man. you're win you're winning. Thank you. You're winning, dog. Yeah, there's, there's some, I don't know. That's <laughs> Thank a, you guys. That's creepy that you put pictures of guys in. There. <laughs> yeah, it's his thing. Leave him alone. Yeah. So I, I hope that helps you out a little bit. Do you have Maps Powerlift or Maps Strong, Chris? I don't. All right, I'll send you. I'll send over Mass Powerlift to you. Okay. Oh, I appreciate that. That was very nice of you. Thank you, guys. You got it, my friend. That. And again, thanks for what you do, man. Keep yep. saving yeah, lives keep out there. Right. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate awesome. that. Thank thanks you, for all you do. I appreciate that too. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, it, I not that again. I want to emphasize this. Not that a functional medicine practitioner is going to find anything. Right. But of all the areas I could point no, him to, based on what he said, the motherfucker's potential. dialed, bro. Yeah. I know. That's why it's hard. It's like, dude, you I think he came on just to flex. Tell <laughs> <laughs> me that. Just to let us know. Yo, I'm well, 52. He didn't have power lifts. I've so done this. I've done good. that. I mean, yeah. he looks- I'm certified. I've been doing this for a long time. Yeah. I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Reverse yeah, dieting. No. I mean, he yeah, no. He's he's, yeah, he's does, killing dude, it. He's, he's killing it. He looks phenomenal for his age. He's got good bow. I mean, he's got a lot of things going for him, man. So I agree. I think that- the potential is the highest there is all I'm saying. Because it sounds like that would be the place that he would be least likely to to look or to change or modify anything is in that kind of holistic space. Um, and who knows? They might find something that he had no idea and be like, oh, wow, that's going to make a big difference, you know? Yeah, he's got more. Sh he's at 12 shows in his belt. It's double what I have. Yeah. So that's a long time. I mean, I could totally feel for his family. And he, you know, he was saying that, like yeah. how they, uh, they don't like it. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that was the one thing about competing. It was such a selfish sport that- 
I was pretty lame to be around. I didn't want to do that's why it was so easy for me to walk away as much as I loved doing it and love the journey and the process of it. Uh, the, how taxing so it selfish, was. Right? It is very selfish, and and you'd make a lot of sacrifice on social things that I mm-hmm. think that are important. Yep. You know, look if you like the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam. You can find me on Twitter at mindpumpsal. How do I incorporate cardio and not lose muscle? I've seen people do this before where they'll start to lose the sharpness of their muscles or they'll start to lose the sculpt a little bit. And that's disheartening. But if you do it right, then you minimize that muscle loss or that metabolism slowdown. In fact, if you do it right, you can actually speed up your metabolism at the same time that you build stamina and endurance. You just have to be able to kind of program it properly. And the way to program it improperly is just to go do as much cardio as you can for as long as you can. Right.